thank you so much for that warm introduction good evening everyone so the task assigned to me is to take the insulin story forward and what i'm going to do is take you through a few more practical case discussions on what to do once you've even initiated insulin just convincing your patient to start insulin is that enough because yes somehow you know you overcome your inertia and the patient's inertia and you initiate insulin but what happens after that just taking a shot is that sufficient or do you really need to intensify do you need to titrate the doses because ultimately the idea is to have glucose levels on control to improve the quality of life of your patients and to reduce the complication so okay so this is joseph 52 years old diabetic for 6 years bmi 32 current hba1c is 8.7 and when you go back onto his file what you discover is last year also he was around the 8s now he's already tried a glp1 but of course he was not able to tolerate it now because of continuously being above 8 what has been done is started him on 10 units of glargine insulin so that's where the initiation of insulin comes in uncontrolled diabetes for a long time is that sufficient simply starting 10 units and telling the patient to come back in a month well two important questions that you need to really consider and educate your patient on is titration of the insulin dose so as to achieve his glucose levels on target and ultimately get an hba1c on target so what do you do how do you teach titration to your patient and this is something i request all of you to at least do that simply initiating insulin is not sufficient unless and until you teach your patient on smbg measuring his glucose levels looking at the response of that particular dose and then based on his smbg levels if he is not going to up titrate his dose simply taking one shot every day is all going to be a waste and this is the kind of patients who come back with uncontrolled diabetes and say i've already been on insulin and my sugars are not controlled because sadly because of our busy practice we forgot to teach him titration right so what he can do is give him a fasting plasma glucose target usually around 80 to 130 is a general target that we give to most of our patients of course needs to be individualized based on, based on your patient profile so what you can do is ask him to check his fasting every day and till he achieves that target there are choices he can take multiple paths so if he is somebody who's really motivated checking his glucose levels every day one unit every day keep going up till the fasting is on target or if he is a little scared of you know increasing every day what you can do is once in 2 to 3 days or maybe twice in a week he can increase 2 to 4 units based on whatever his fasting plasma glucose is because obviously like dr panda very beautifully explained fixing fasting first there will be this fraction of patients where simply bringing down the fasting glucose automatically the post meals the entire graph moves down so of most patients with type 2 diabetes who are on insulin <coughs> glucose goals are an hba1c of less than 7% and a fasting target of less than 110 in the absence of hypoglycemia and this is the rssdi esi recommendation as well of course if the fasting plasma glucose persists above 126 in spite of titration you can always ask the patient to come back to you for any guidance wherein you need to look at the technique the insulin storage and all those Uh, intricacies which we'll come to in a little while if hypoglycemia occurs that means the fasting drops to less than 70 this is where you need to reduce the dose of insulin either by 10% of the total dose or maybe 2 to 4 units depending on the level of hypoglycemia so it's important that you not only motivate the patient to start insulin but you need to educate him on insulin injection technique on the need to rotate the sites there will be these patients because of their dexterity they keep injecting at the same site so that again can lead to a lot of absorption problems so this is something that needs to be told to the patient that he needs to keep changing the injection site every day patient has to be aware of the storage and transport requirements for insulin and of course to look at the expiry and the best before date so once the vial has been opened it has to be finished in that next 28 days itself patient has a blood glucose meter and see to it that he knows how to use his glucose meter how to check his glucose levels and you teach him the titration algorithm as well 
Talk about hypoglycemia, make him aware of hypoglycemia symptoms, how to check and what to do. The rule of 15, which works very well. So that is something you need to talk to your patient. Understand, see to it that he understands the glucose targets that have been given to him. He understands what to do when the glucose levels are dipping. He understands what to do when the glucose levels are above target. And of course, the concomitant medications that he's on, you need to adjust that and educate him on how to time those other medications. So even if he's on any of the other glucose lowering medications, you need to review and adjust those. And of course, schedule a follow up between the doctor and the patient or your team to just ensure that he's doing the things the way they want to be done. Now, moving on, this is Mr. Kiran, a 50 year old type 2 diabetic for last six years. He's concerned that his glucose levels are not under tar un not on control. He's been putting on weight and lately he's been anxious and confused because of poor glycemic control. Look at his lab results. His A1C is 8.6. Fasting is 116 but his post meal is 210. And if you go back to his medication history, he's already on a glimepiride. 1 milligram and a metformin 500 milligram FDC, 2 tablets daily. So he's on 4 milligrams of glimepiride, 1000 milligrams of metformin in a day along with empagliflozin 25. He was initiated on insulin glargine last year and currently he's already on 18 units. But despite that, you can see a fasting of 116, but the postprandial is 210. So BMI is 29.2, BP is 138 by 84. He's consulting a dietitian. He's having a healthy diet. He's exercising at least three times a day. So is this the patient where you need to do something? He's already on insulin. He's already on orals. Yes. The answer is yes, because he's still not on his postprandial target. His HbA1c is still high. So this is a typical patient where you need to intensify on the insulin regime. So when should you think of intensification? Of course, suppose the fasting plasma glucose is almost on target, but you see a persistently elevated postprandial glucose, which means more than 180. That means no point actually just going up on the glargine itself going up on the blazel itself of course if the fasting is on target but the a1c is still not on target you have to tell him to do smbg and find out whether it's the postprandial or the post lunch or the post dinner which is contributing to that increased a1c and if your patient is already taking a high dose of insulin and what do what do you call a high dose or an optimal dose of insulin the ada says anybody who stay, whose insulin dose is more than half of his body weight which means 0.5 units per kilogram body weight. That is a fair idea of an average person's dose requirement. Suppose your patient is already on a basal dose, which is half of his body weight and still his glucose levels are not on target. You need to do intensive SMBG to find out where exactly the problem is happening. And that is where you need to think of insulin intensification. Furthermore, these kind of patients where the fasting is close to the target, if you are just going to increase the basal dose to kind of bringing the HbA1c down or to control the postprandial, he will end up either with nocturnal hypoglycemia or daytime hypoglycemia and you will burn your hands. So this is where SMBG is very, very important. And then you need to think of insulin intensification in terms of the adding on some injections or changing him to a premix and I will come to that uh, in a little while after this case. Now this is Miss S, a 53-year-old woman. Diagnosed with type 2 diabetes for 15 years, started on insulin two years back, strong family history of cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. You can see the entire gamut of medications she's on. She's on almost everything along with the glargine insulin. So she's on a gliptin, she's on a gliflozin, she's on metformin and she's of course on a glycolazide extended release OD. She's on a statin and she's already on glargine 32 units. Look at the HbA1c here, 9.1. What is the fasting? 168. Postprandial, 230. So what do you do with her? Do you want to still continue with the basal insulin and keep increasing the basal insulin to somehow push it from 168 to maybe 100 and think that probably the postprandial will come down? Or do you want to intensify here? Not only targeting the fasting, but also bringing the postprandial down. So this is where maybe intensification with adding either a shot of a rapid acting insulin analog to her current basal and the orals, or maybe shifting her to twice daily premix or a co-formulation or any other intensification of insulin regime is required for this. So when do you stop titrating the basal insulin and start thinking of prandial options? This is... When you know that your patient is already on an optimal basal insulin dose 
but is not meeting his glycemic targets that means a1c is not on goal with almost 0.7 to 1 units per kilogram per day of daily basal insulin i told you the optimal dose is half Sometimes you have patients who are extremely insulin resistant and you keep increasing their doses and go almost to one unit per kilogram. So, you know, if it's a like 80 kilo, 80 kg man and you're almost like giving him 60 to 70 to 80 units of basal insulin, still not on control. Sorry, please do not continue just up titrating the basal. This is where you need to add probably a rapid acting analog to rectify the post meal comes or like I said, if the HB1C is elevated despite a normal fasting with basal insulin. Or if the fasting with basal insulin is within target range like I showed you in the other case, but the postprandial is persistently above goal. Or where you know that further increasing basal insulin is going to land up that patient into a hypoglycemia, then it is time you start talking about the second insulin shot. So these are the algorithms that are there to help us on deciding which way to go. This is the famous ADA algorithm. Clearly telling you that either you can just add a basal plus a bolus insulin here to the biggest meal of the day. So as another shot or you can go to a basal plus plus that means two boluses or a basal bolus regime which means three preprandial doses of a bolus insulin along with one shot of basal insulin which is the intensive gold standard basal bolus regime. Or you can shift your patient to twice daily premix. It can be a low premix, a 30-70 or a 25-75. Or it can be a high premix, which means a 50-50, twice a day. So the concept of intensification, like I said, is of course, start with lifestyle and you start with diet and you start with that. And that continues all along. Even if your patient is on insulin, it does not mean that lifestyle is no more needed. So that is something that you need to talk about every time. But... You can add on a rapid acting shot before the largest meal of the day to get that particular postprandial spike under control. Still, if you are seeing another spike in another meal, you can give them two shots of the bolus or you can actually intensify to the third shot of a bolus and continue with your basal, which is the basal bolus regime. So a fixed single bolus, you can start with four to six units with the largest meal of the day. And then based on the postprandial, you can keep uh, up titrating the dose to achieve the target. So uh, you can get a fair guess of whatever the basal you are giving, 10% of that can be the first bolus. So either you start with 4 to 6 units or if somebody who is on a high basal requirement, there may be 10% of the ba basal that can be your bolus with whichever meals you want to give and then you up titrate based on the patient's requirement. This is Mr. Raju, another case, hypertensive, yeah. Confirmed case of CVD, GFR is 65, he's on cetagliptin metformin, he's on canagliflozin, telmisartan and atorvastatin, follows an irregularly timed diet. So again, he's on glargine 36, you see that he's getting sweating, giddiness in early morning hours, so there's a hypo that's coming in here, SMBG 76, wife panics and calls you, so what do you do? Of course, this is where I think storage we'll talk about later. So again, these are patients where, like I said, you need to encourage your patients to do SMBG and accordingly decide on what regime, what insulin. One important thing that you should always remember is insulin storage condition. Sometimes people are not taught about that. So whenever you are initiating insulin, talk about where to store besides talking about the injection technique. So generally tell them not to put it in the freezer. A lot of patients put their insulin in the freezer, thaw it and use it. So that is going to reduce the efficacy of the insulin. So it's important to tell them that it needs 2 to 8 degrees, which can be the door of the fridge where they keep the butter and the eggs. So let the pen be there. So they take it out before injection. They can keep it outside for 5 minutes and then inject. Protect the glargine from direct heat and direct light. So somebody who is taking insulin to office should not leave it lying in the car. That's another step. So this is important. So timely basal insulin dose titration is important to overcome the inertia. A detailed history helps to figure out any errors in administration that may be happening. And a continuous flow follow-up and a good time spent with patients improves better outcomes. So even if you have a busy OPD, you can always have an educator with you or a dietitian or any of your trained nurses who can do the education part so that your patient is guided well on not only starting insulin, on SMBG, on up titration of the insulin dose, or the insulin regime 
and then achieving goals so that ultimately the entire reason why insulin was started which means reducing glucose levels to target reducing complications getting the glucose levels under control and a good quality of life is met thank you